This is reality TV that works. Startups, made in Kansas City. I was in college and I was at DeVry. I was working at Sears, had a car dealer come in to buy a computer from me and was telling me about all these problems he had. So I ended up helping write some software for him. Matt and I met uh, originally, he had a company called Vin Stickers. And Vin Stickers, our dealership ended up being the first customer for Vin Stickers. And it was an on the lot service company. What they did is post the vehicles online and put stickers on the car with the prices to make sure everything matched car prices online, on the lot. That kind of led into starting Vin Solutions a couple years later when we had some um, really good business ideas where we create a product for dealers that a lot of dealers could use. How Vin Solutions came along is my partner, and Matt and I's partner, Mike DeLay. Mike and I started a company called AES Automotive E-Solutions, and what we did is we helped car dealers run their internet departments better. We used the model that had worked at my dealership and used it for other dealers. Well, once we did that, we had it run, it was good, we needed a tool to prove it to the dealer, something that they could see it. So we looked around, there was nothing out there. Uh, at that point, we went to Matt, because we knew Matt at Vin Stickers, and said, hey Matt, here's what we want. We want a program that does this, and this, and this, and Matt said, no problem, no problem, no problem, because said he could do any of them. So the company actually came from Matt's company, Vin Stickers. Our company, Automotive E-Solutions, put the two together, you got Vin Solutions. So that's how, how the company name came about. What we were doing was we were able to give all this relevant information to the customers. I mean, all the things they really wanted. Not just, okay, if you came in to buy a F-150 and we send you information on a hybrid, you don't really care, that's not relevant to you, you don't care. Well, we don't know that as dealers unless you tell us. So this tool helped gather that information to make sure we're giving the right information to the customers, we're contacting them, calling them back, sending them emails, whatever, however they want to be contacted. It was kind of fascinating to go from, you know, went from being at Belton High School to DeVry to you know, being this 22 year old kid, right, to starting this great company that really took off and became very successful. Um, was kind of just fortunate to be in the right place at the right time. Vin Solutions started out as a, a simple company in my basement. My dad was my first employee, my uh, best friend was my second employee, and, and just rapidly grew into this, this huge business. It grew quickly, and that's a, that's, that's a tough thing, a really tough thing to do. There's two ways to go out of business not enough and too much. And when you get that, that fast growth like that, it's very expensive to be able to maintain all that growth. But uh, we, we lucked out, we fought our way through it. Um, we doubled the size every year. Um, in 2010, we were on the Inc. 500. We were the like, 33rd fastest growing software company in the country. So it was just, just rapid growth. Um, I had a couple other business partners. Um, what was really fascinating about us is we never took any outside capital. The company was bootstrapped from the very beginning. When you think about it, we're a startup company that does software in the automotive sector. In 07, when automotive and software were not good words, so I mean any banker office that we walked into, they were jumping out the window to get away from us. So this thing was totally funded on our personal money, our credit cards, everything we could do to keep it afloat at the beginning. And it started with three of us, one employee in the office, wondering how we we're going to cover our $600 rent to where we had 350 employees when we sold. And then in 2011, um, we were lucky enough to sell the company to Autotrader.com for about $150 million. Well, you know, our goal was is there's a couple ex exit strategies with it. Um, I knew I wanted to continue on with my family business, so it wasn't anything that we really thought about handing over to our kids. So selling was one option. Uh, taking it public was another option. It happened way faster than we thought it would. We had not planned at all. When we talked to AutoTrader, it was because another company had made an offer to buy us, and we said we didn't want to sell. And the number kept getting higher, and we said, okay. Yeah, but we didn't like the company that was making an offer, and that's when I contacted, I had a relationship with AutoTrader. I contacted their CEO and told him, hey, we're decided we are kind of in play here, and this all started from there. So one of the common questions I get is, how does it feel like to sell your baby? And um, in a lot of ways, after doing it for seven years, it's not really your baby anymore. What I always say is it kind of feels like your, your baby went off to college, got married. It's not really your baby anymore. And, um, in a lot of ways, just I was ready to do something new, ready for a new challenge. Um, so it's just, it's just part of the evolution. You know, the second time around of having your own business, it's great to draw upon your, your past experiences. Um, I started off as, as just a simple software developer, and now I've, I've gained so much experience around sales and marketing, uh, legal and accounting, and all these different things. 
And so it's great to be able to apply those to the second time around here. And if anything, it just gives you a lot more confidence. In January 2012, I started Stackify. Um, our goal is to help companies support their applications. So we want to help, we want to tell them when their applications aren't working correctly and give them all the tools they need to evaluate why they're not, why they're not working and solve those problems. One of the best things about technology startups is you don't need a lot of capital. You really need a lot of time and you just need really smart software developers that can create the product. But you don't have to have hundreds of thousands of dollars you know, to open a storefront or buy inventory, do other things like you do other businesses. Um, and, the, and even the best part about software companies is they're extremely profitable once they get up and running. You can sell a product and it doesn't actually have a big cost of goods sold. It's just extremely profitable, which make them very valuable long term. Yeah, I stayed automotive based. Uh, Mike, Matt, and I kind of went our own ways, but we still stayed friends and had involvement. So I left uh, and from Venn Solutions, came back and stayed in the automotive, bought my family's business out. Uh, Mike stayed with Venn Solutions for two years to make sure everything went, and Matt started with Stackify. So now we're just coming back together to, with a new endeavor. A co-production of KCPT and Outpost Worldwide at home in Kansas City. Production. Post. Content.